Oh my goodness, this is bad, 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 bad! No! No! Come on. Come on, Argent Tavis. Come to me. Oh, absolute legend. Oh my goodness. Come on, come on, rescue me, rescue me! Ah! <laughs> What's up, folks? Welcome to the next episode in our Beginner's Guide series, How to Get Started in Ark Survival Evolved on the Island. And today we're going to be showing you how to tame my personal top five favourite beginner farming dinos. And before we get going, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who commented on last week's video and voted for me to have my permanent base location in the Redwoods and on the lake in particular. So at the moment, we have this little kind of cordoned off island, which I know looks a little bit hostile. I've had to put up some spike walls just to stop things like this carno here from getting in. But... My plan in the long run is to hopefully utilise... Oh my goodness, how very dare you. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm trying to, do, uh, trying to do a video here. How rude. Yeah, lo lo lots of uh, interesting um, hazards to deal with in this area. Got one. How do you stop? There we go. <laughs> right. As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted. Hoping to utilize some of this flat area here for some dino storage and I really want to build uh, a, um, a tree house. I want to do a tree platform in this tree here. So that is going to be for a future episode and the reason why I wanted to look at farming dinos today is because in order to build a base it's going to be a lot easier to have some dinos to help me out. But the very first uh, dino, dino? <laughs> the very first dino that I want to tame isn't strictly a farming dino. But it's going to be invaluable in helping us to transport goods around the map and also uh, to transport dinos themselves around the map as well. And the very first dino that is going to be is going to be the Argentavis, which is kind of a cross between an eagle and an albatross, I guess. It is a large bird. It has a very, very good weight capacity. And not only that, but it's it's pretty good at defense and attacking as well, uh, which is going to be a massive upgrade from our uh, our little Penelope Pterodon here, who has served us well up to this point. But uh, we do we, we do need a bit of an upgrade. Uh, also, the Argentavis's saddle acts as a mobile smithy as well, so it means we can craft things on the go. Now there are various uh, places on the island where you can find these to tame. They are very common around mountainous areas. In fact, all of the mountain areas, you will find an abundance of Argentavis. But when you're first starting out, this can be uh, this can be a little bit dangerous to try and tame one there. So we're uh, gonna head on over to Carno Island. So here we are on Carno Island, specifically the little island here to the southeast, which can be found here on the map. There we go, coordinates approximately 20, 85 there. I'm going to set up my, my door trap. Uh, there are lots of different ways uh, you can trap Argentavis. This is my personal favourite. So I'm going to be using the four gateways, a two gate trap. I have seen people use three, but I just like that extra little bit of space. Um, you know, We need to put it somewhere reasonably flat for it to work. And what we can do is to help line it up, we can hit K on the keyboard, go into K mode as it's called, zoom out a little bit, and then we can see a bit better where we want to place these gates. We want the gap to be big enough that we can get out of, but the Argentavis has to stay in. So it's a bit of a guessing game. If you find your trap uh, isn't kind of placed correctly and stuff, don't worry. Um, you, you can place it again. It's all good. It could be a good idea, therefore, to bring some spares just in case you do get it wrong. I'm hoping that because I've done this enough times that I'm going to be okay, but we'll just have to wait and see. So we want to open this front gate and we want to leave this back gate closed, okay? And then the idea is we're going to lead the Argentavis in with our pterodon. Let me see, Penelope, where are you? There we go. We're going to lead the Argentavis into the trap and the idea is that when we get to about here we're going to zoom along in park ourselves here and then run around and close the door on it so in theory this should work the next thing we're going to have to do is scout ourselves out an argentavis now at this point i am looking for a high as, as high a level as possible 
So the max level for regular dinos on this uh, single player playthrough is 150. Got a level 80 there, so that's like a, a mid level. Not bad, but can we do better? I did see uh, a couple more hanging around over here as well. God, there's loads of them today. This is good. Okay, level 10. Boo! <laughs> oh, Pterodon's head's in the way. Oh, 105 over there. Okay, 105. That is looking like our winner so far. Level 20, level 35, level 105. Okay, 105. Let's go. So the, the, the trick to this is to bite it. Just bite it once. You don't want to do too much damage to it. But the key is to keep it quite close. Um, if it does uh, bite you a little bit, don't worry too much. You can keep an eye on your health. But these Argentavis lose aggro really quickly. They get interested by everything else that's happening on the ground. So we want to keep it really close to begin with. And as we get closer to the trap, we can speed up and try and secure it in. Now, one thing that I did make sure to do before I set off here is to make sure that my pterodon was on passive so that when I inevitably dismount it to close the trap, the pterodon doesn't try to go and attack the Argentavis, which can be a little bit problematic. Uh, we, we really don't want to be doing any excess damage uh, to, to the Argentavis. We would like to knock it out and make it our friend and not kill it. Okay, trap is in the distance, so I'm working on lining it up. Yes, I am taking a couple of hits, but that's okay. All right. The moment of truth. Can I uh, can I get it in? Are we ready? So bring yourself down low and then whoop. Are you in, my dude? Are you in? It is in. Okay, now the moment of truth. Close the door. There we go. Nice. So now we get to knock it out. Now we're going to be watching for it carefully. As you can see, it's starting to attack the trap a little bit. Um, once its torpor gets to a, a certain level, just before it gets knocked out, it's going to start trying to fly away and stop attacking. And at that point, we will use that visual cue to slow down our shooting because we, we don't want to accidentally put a trank arrow in it when it's already knocked out because it's going to lose taming effectiveness. So equipment I'm using, I'm just using a primitive crossbow and trank arrows, nothing fancy at the moment. It's only level 105, even if it was a max level we could still do it this way. It just takes a bit longer. Okay, so now it's stopped attacking. It means its torpor is uh, raising up a little bit. So I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds in between each shot. In case it does get knocked out. Usually wait between two and three seconds between each one. This is also a good way to ensure that you don't accidentally kill the thing as well. There we go. And it's out. Fantastic. So the Argentavis requires meat to be tamed. You can use raw meat and that will take you a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and try and scout out some prime meat for this. There we go. There we go, look, 96%. So it's only got one more eat, and then it's going to be tamed up. As you can see, taming effectiveness, 99.9%. .9%. So Prime Meat does a pretty good job. As I say, I have got boosted taming rates. I'm doing times 10 taming uh, for this playthrough. So depending on what your rates are, you might have to wait a little bit longer for it to tame up. Yeah, you know, one more, and then we got it. The question is, what are we going to name it? What are we going to name it? Male Argentavis. I will leave that one up to you. Oh my goodness. What is happening? What is happening? How did you get over here? Sometimes beasties will follow you over from, from across the way. I guess we were followed over, hey? Who's this as well? Is this, is this, who's this? Who's this? I feel like the whole of Ark is just contradicting my taming advice today. My goodness. Okay, yeah, there we go, there we go. Let me just get rid of the body. Hide the evidence. <laughs> hey! Argent Davis has been tamed. See, yeah, folks, if you've got a name for this majestic male Argent Davis, then please let me know in the comments. And we will name him next time. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to do a bit of a dino train home because the Pterodon is much faster than the uh, Argent Davis. We will we'll go on the Argent Davis. We'll put the saddle on. 
off we go. We're going to go back home and we will drop Penelope off and we're going to be using our fabulous Argentavis today in order to help us tame the other four dinos that I would like to tame. When you're leveling up your Argentavis, what I tend to do is, personal preference, is to level up primarily weight and also stamina. I tend to try to go for 1500 stamina and then I put everything else into weight. This is for a general farming Argentavis. If you're planning on using your Argentavis for anything else, including battle Argies, which yes, can be a thing, then uh, yeah, you might want to consider a bit of health and melee too. So I have dropped the Pterodon off and I am on my trusty new Argentavis and we're in our second location of the day to find our second dino, which is going to be an Ankylosaurus. And my favorite place to tame these is on Herbivore Island, which can be found in the bottom southeastern corner of the map. There we go. And I have got my uh, my coordinate doodad, 8283. There we go. So we can see exactly where we are here. Uh, this is, I think, the best place to tame them because there are only herbivores that spawn on this island. So really, we are not at much risk here. You can also find Ankylosaurus in mountainous areas as well, but those are a little bit more dangerous. And it means here we can easily tame one without a trap. I can spot one just here. That's a level 15, which isn't very good. Let me see if we can do any better. There's usually several that spawn on this island. If you're finding that there aren't very many, or perhaps they're not spawning in the levels that you want them to spawn in. What you can go and do is you can kill any existing Ankylosaurus or for that matter, any existing smaller herbivores to encourage new herbivores and new Ankylosaurus to spawn in. Are we gonna, oh yeah, okay. There's one over here as well by the looks of it. What level are you, my friend? You're a level 90, okay, that's not bad. I'll just do another quick scout over here, but 90 might be our best bet. So one of the good things about the Argentavis, uh, which I was mentioning earlier, is that it can pick up uh, dinos that are under a certain drag weight. As you can see, now this is both handy for when farming, but also for when transporting dinos early game, when you don't have access to cryopods. And at the moment we don't quite have uh, the levels in order to uh, craft those. So Argentavis are a really good kind of early game taming companions. Let's have a look. I have a feeling this might be the best Ankylosaurus we have. So I think, yeah, I, I think we're going to go ahead and tame it. I'm going to try to do it without a trap. I'm going to park my Argentavis somewhere uh, in the distance because I, I don't want the Ankylosaurus to aggro to the Argentavis during the taming process. So I'm going to leave the bird here. <clears throat> And we are going to attempt to tame this. Now, it will uh, try to attack us once we start hitting it. And if the Ankylosaurus has any um, other Ankylosaurus uh, near it, those Ankylosaurus will also become aggravated. So the fact we've got this one on its own is a good thing. Here we go. So yeah, we just want to keep running away from it. As you can see, it's pretty slow. Probably will have to turn around at some point and peg it a little bit. One of the things to watch out for if you're taming these without a trap is the fact that when it starts to torp or run, they will have a habit of running into the water. Make sure you don't knock them out when they're in the water because they will drown. So you really want to kind of keep leading it around as much as possible. Now, the reason why this is uh, on my list today, in no particular order really, um, my top five beginner farming dinos, is because it is one of the best metal farmers in the game. At least early game. It can also farm crystal and obsidian, which is super handy. As you can see, it's Torpor running now. I want to try and discourage it from going in the water, but it's going to do it. Oh no, we're good, we're good. Hey, and it's down. Fantastic. So in order to tame this at the moment, I'm just going to feed it some uh, mejo berries. Down the line, uh, kibble is going to be the way forward for taming. I think that's going to be a whole separate episode, though, on how to create a kibble farm. So I'm going to go and gather some mejo berries, and we will be back once this thing is tamed up so I can show you just how good it is at farming that metal. Okay, so this thing should tame out there we go perfect timing with one more eat <laughs> i think i put a little bit too many uh mejo berries in there but better too much than too little let me put the saddle on 
There we go. And we'll give it a little ride. Again, if you have a name for this Ankylosaurus, feel free to drop it in the comments and I will pick my favourite for next stream. There are two ways that you can um, you can use this to farm. You, you can ride it around and hit stuff. Let me find a metal node. The metal nodes on this island tend to be hidden amongst uh, all of the uh, rocks. But you, you can actually hit the rocks and, and get a decent amount of flint with this. And thatch from trees! Look at that. So thatch from trees, uh, flint from rocks. But most importantly is that metal. Let me see if I can find a node. I know, I know there's one hiding in here somewhere. They are a little bit slow. Uh, the, the things that you're going to want to pump into an Ankylosaurus is primarily weight. Weight is going to be the most important stat, but you might want to consider pumping a little bit into melee, no more than 400%. However, I find that um, beyond 400% melee, the Ankylosaurus doesn't really give us much more metal per swing anyway. But here we go. Here's a metal node. And there we go. Look at all of this metal. 336 metal for that one node. As we can see, we are over encumbered already, which is where the... Um, which is where the Argentavis comes in handy. I can find where I've parked it. Because we can use the, use the Argentavis to carry the Ankylosaurus around between metal nodes. And I'm going to show you a pretty neat thing here as well. Provided the Ankylosaurus's uh, inventory is half full or less, it will actually auto farm when in the clutches of an Argentavis. Bring the Anki over here then to the metal node. There we go. Just did a little swing there. So yeah, we can keep auto farming as well and you can just fly around over your metal nodes, your stone nodes. You can farm thatch with trees if you want. You can farm obsidian and crystal this way as well. So yeah, number two on the list is our Ankylosaurus. I am going to go ahead and drop this back off at base. All right, the third dino of the day that we are going to be taming is going to be the Castroides, also known as the Beaver. And this dino is fantastic as a beginner tame for farming wood. The best location, I think, or the easiest, safest location to tame it is right here at coordinates 8358. I can already see a few of them swimming around, so let us just check levels. There's usually not so many of them uh, in one area, so we do we, we might have to go to another location. 85? Okay, not terrible. I could cope with an 85. Have we got any more dotted around the area? I swear I saw some other ones. We are getting some of that notorious island fog coming in, which is going to make it a bit more difficult to uh, spot them. Aha! I see one. Uh-oh. Oh no, that's a rock. Wait, are my eyes deceiving me? Oh no, it is there. Level 10. Okay, that's bad. We we, we don't want to tame that one. Level 10, level 85. Can we see any more or should we potentially go for the 85? I'm thinking we might just go for the 85. Now, if you don't kind of find any good levels here again you can just kill them off to encourage higher levels to spawn in but beavers can be found uh, up and down the rivers on the island if i just pull my map out uh, in particular you can also find them here here and here on the map as well as this location so i'm gonna try and tame one without the use of a trap just watch out in this area. You can get piranhas, you can get sarcos and other things. Generally, it's not too bad, but wait, is this the 85 or is this a different one? Oh, it's level 20 as well. So we got three. Um, We're going to go for the 85. It's typical that we've got uh, some fog right now. <laughs> can see much clearer underwater, funnily enough question is where did it go they're they're quite fast in the water so you want to try and lure it out on land if you can here we go this is our friend so let's go now you should be able to outrun these they're, they're, they are oh my goodness okay i don't want to speak too soon here they're a little bit faster than the ankylosaurus but nothing that we uh oh my goodness okay they're all coming after us now they're all coming after us. If worse comes to worse, we can always use the Argentavis to drop it into a trap. 
I was kind of hoping it was going to torpor run by now, but obviously not. Shouldn't be uh, too much longer. There we go. Oh my goodness, what is this? Oh! <laughs> no! Its friend has come to bite my butt. It's okay, we got this. We got this. We got this. It's down! Okay, I'm gonna have to deal with this one though, aren't I? Uh, when I say deal with it, I mean run away because I don't have a gun right now and I feel like my pike isn't gonna do the trick. <laughs> I'm just trying to make my friend your friend. Oh my goodness! No! Oh my goodness, this is bad, 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 bad! No! No! Come on. Come on, Argent Tavis. Come to me. Oh, absolute legend. Oh my goodness. Come on, come on. Rescue me, rescue me. Ah! <laughs> and yeah, uh, we want to watch out for those, don't we? Holy crap. That was close. All right. Beaver is knocked out. Uh, Argent Tavis is alive. Fantastic. Sarko is kind of out of the way. Uh, I'm going to use Medjo Berries again to tame the beaver for now, the same as the Ankylosaurus. So I'm going to go ahead and gather a, a few of those and then we will be back when this thing is tamed up. So one more eat and our sleepy beaver will be tamed out. It looks like I can't read because this is actually a level 55. This wasn't 85. Not quite as good as I'd hoped, but I mean... A level 55 beaver is better than no beaver, I guess, so we'll we'll take it. I'll just have to be on the lookout for a higher level down the line. I do find on the island in general, because it is the first map in the storyline series, I guess, dinos tend to spawn in mainly at the lower levels, so it can be quite a task to find dinos that are close to max level or max level. So I'm going to take what I can get today. Level 55 beaver. I've had to feed it a few narco berries as well to keep it under. Got plenty of mejo berries here. I think, although the torpidity is going down quite quick, I think we're going to be fine until the last eight. 96%. Again, if anybody has a name, go ahead. Give me a beaver name. Lots of dinos to name today. Here we go. Ah, oh, actually, can I can I take that back? Because I have uh, my favourite beaver name. Uh, and it's going to be... This is um, after one of my favourite creators called Corallis, whom you may have heard of. And he called his beaver Justin. So this is going to be Justin Beaver. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, I'm not letting you guys name this one, okay? Let's pop the saddle on. And let's go see what we can do here. So, wood farming. A little bit of thatch, but mainly wood. A lot of wood. And again, really, the beavers... I would I would only level weight. I, I wouldn't even bother leveling, leveling melee because there is an absolute abundance of trees everywhere. So you never need to worry about trying to get as much wood as possible per bite. So yeah, 100% leveling weight all the time. I'm going to go ahead and drop its inventory for a second because I want to just demonstrate how we can actually auto farm with the beaver a little bit like we can with the Anki. I'm just going to turn you off following for a second there we go oh Argy's got a level let's keep going in with that stamina at the moment so we want to pick the beaver up and we want to kind of hover near the top of the trees again it, it can be a bit janky but so long as the beaver's inventory is less than half full as you can see we've just farmed up a little bit of wood so all in all my my favorite beginner wood gatherer i think so let's go ahead and take justin back Okay, so I have been scouting about the area, trying to find my fourth dino of the day. And I have found two pretty close to base. They're not great levels though. This is the Dodicarus, or the Dodec for short, which is a great stone farmer. And so this is what we're going to be taming today. This little fella down here, where is he? There we go. Level 55. It's really not great. It's the same level as our beaver, but it's going to do for now. Now these things tend to spawn all around the redwoods 
and also in the mountainous areas which are all dangerous areas so i tend to like to move these dinos to an area where they are slightly easier to tame i.e where nothing is going to bite my butt or bite its butt and since we're pretty close to base i'm going to go ahead and use my argentavis to pick it up I'm going to take it back to my base and I'm going to build a little trap for it because these will get aggressive when you hit them. I obviously don't want them going around uh, damaging my base or hurting my dinos. Let's pop it down here. It should just wander around without causing too much hassle. And then for the trap, it's uh, it, it's pretty straightforward um, because we're going to be using the Argentavis to drop it in. All we're going to need are four stone foundations and we don't even need 16 stone door frames actually we only need eight for this purpose there we go so let's let's uh pop this up quickly we can use yeah we can use the argentavis to drop it in which makes it nice and easy if we had wanted to we could have trapped the beaver and the um the anki this way as well where did it go Goodness, it didn't despawn on me, did it? That does happen sometimes when you take them out of their spawn areas. There we go, he's here. Chilling. Let's pop him in. There we go, and he's in, so we won't be able to get out now. But we can shoot through the door frames, which is why I, I quite like this very simple trap design. Now, I'm going to make sure that everybody is on passive so we didn't get absolute chaos. We want to make sure when we are shooting at the dodo, we want to make sure that we are hitting its soft parts. So either its head or underneath its shell or the underside of its tail. Otherwise, we don't do very much damage. Um, also, we need to be aware that when the uh, dodex torpor gets very high, it will run like normal dinos. But also, um, if, if it actually receives too much damage, it will turn into a little ball, it will roll into a ball, and it will take hardly any damage at all from that point onwards, which makes it very difficult to tame. So we do want to make sure that we're not causing it too much damage. So if I were you, just leave a couple of seconds from the get-go in between each shot to allow that torpor to go up ever so slightly. Stop running, pal! Go to sleep! Okay. We can generally see what its health's like according to how bloody it is and I can see that it's not too bloody so I will just keep hitting it a bit quicker for the time being. <clears throat> and there we go! Well, that was quick. <laughs> Alright. Let's get some Mejo Berries inside of you and we will wait until this is tamed up. Do and eat for me. Just one more. You got this. There we go! Roly poly! Okay, let's put a saddle on you. And I'm just gonna get rid of the a couple of walls on, on here, sex, so we can bring him out. And we'll go we'll go and farm some stone. So a really cool thing that, that this guy can do, let me show you. Hopefully there's no bad dudes waiting outside my base right now. There we go. So we can just farm rocks a normal way by swinging our tail. Look at that, look at that stone. Fantastic. Fantastic. But we can also make him roll. Uh, yeah, there we go, look! Roll in! So in order to do the little roll, you just need to hold down right click. In fact, you can let go and he'll still roll. It does go through quite a bit of stamina doing this. I thought he harvested rocks doing this, but obviously not. It's just like a little uh, cute cosmetic thing. I I guess he runs quicker. Well, doesn't run quicker. Moves quicker when he's in roll mode. But look at that. We've got um, we've got a fair bit of stone there. Let's go back to base. All of these dinos that we're that we're, that we're taming up today are going to be fantastic when it comes to building our base we're gonna be able to farm resources so much quicker than we would be able to by hand so here we are placing our last tame of the day which is the moss chops 
This is a very good all-round farmer for a beginner. It is a good berry farmer. It is very good at farming fibre and it's also very good at farming small creatures like penguins and Hesperonis for polymer. Oh my goodness. Did you just spawn right in front of me? Okay, we've got a dillo here. So a good thing about the Argentatus, if you right click on a small dino, you can pick it up and then use your left click to bat it with your claws and kill it. So another very handy thing for when you're trying to tame something and then something else is getting in the way. Now, moss chops are a slightly different tame to the ones or the dinos that we've seen so far today. These are actually passively tamed and they all ask you for a number of different things. They can be pretty fussy. This one is asking for a Tinto Berry. It's a level 45. Let's just go ahead and tame it. Not the best level, but not the worst. Tinto Berries, fine. You can easily grab those. There we go. Uh, like with uh, most passive tames, what you need to do is you need to put the food in your zero slot and go up behind it and press E to feed and bam, it is ours. Fantastic. Now, sometimes moss chops can be really fussy. They can ask for things like rare flowers, rare mushrooms, honey, prime fish meat. So in the beginning stages, you might not have access to some of those resources. If a moss chops is asking for something fussy, just keep looking around because I'm sure that you will find one that is slightly less fussy. I should mention that these moss chops are in abundance all over the south beach of the islands. We're actually here at the moment in the in the southwestern corner at about 85, 26, but anywhere along the south beach area. And it makes them a good tame as well because it's a relatively uh, safe place i mean we've got dillos and stuff that's not too bad they don't need a saddle as well uh, so it's a pretty good all round now with these you are going to want to look at pumping some points into melee as well as weight because when you're farming more valuable resources like like polymer you're going to want to be getting as much as possible as you can see here we're getting some berries we're getting some fiber we are getting pretty full so i'm going to go ahead and put some points into weight there we go happy dance <laughs> we've got another moss chops over here out of interest i wonder what this one is gonna be asking for have a look yeah cooked prime meat there we go not the fussiest it's doable but you know it's not asking for a berry Okay, so I have spotted some Hesperonis over here. I'm going to take a little risk because we can't pick these up with our Argentavis. So I'm going to go ahead and... Well, we could try and kill it with the Moss Chops, I guess. We'll give it a go. It's not the best fighter. It's more the harvesting that uh, is going to be uh, good for us. We can actually go ahead and use the Moss Chops to specialise in harvesting for any of these resources. You've got sap, raw prime meat, raw prime fish meat. Rare flower, rare mushroom, leech blood, organic polymer, which is what we want. So we're going to put these harvesting points into organic polymer. So we're going to get more uh, polymer, which will be awesome. So every time the moss chops gains a level, we gain a, a farming level uh, to pump in. So we've just gained a weight level there. And I can go ahead and put that in organic polymer. Now let me just see. Can we kill it with the moss chops? If not, then we can just kill it with our pike and then use the moss chops to farm the uh, farm the polymer. Oh no, we might do it. There we go, 16 organic polymer. It's not a tremendous amount, but obviously the more we level up, the more points we're going to get uh, into that specialization. Oh, oh no! Okay. Uh, can I do this? Like, how bloody are you? Can I do this? You're a level 15. Can I just chase you around in circles? Oh my goodness. <laughs> that got interesting. Um. Oh yeah, bad thing about the moss chops is they, uh, yeah, if, if they will flee. They will run away. They, they really don't like fighting. Like you can force them to fight if you're riding them. But the moment you get dismounted, like then, they are going to run off. So uh, there we go. Hello, friends. <laughs> Well, this moss chops doesn't have a name, so yeah. If you've got a name for the moss chops as well, uh, please suggest in the comments. <laughs> if if we had a higher level moss chops, then um, 
We're going to get even more organic polymer. So there we have it, my top five beginner farming tames on Ark. So these are just these are just my top five. It is completely my opinion. I'd be really interested to hear in the comments if you would have a different top five for beginners. We will definitely be looking at some other good farming tames for kind of mid to end game when we get there at that point. So today, folks, if you do have a name for the Argentavis, a name for the Ankylosaurus and for the Moss Chops, please do go ahead and drop them in the comments for me. But that is going to be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the content, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And if you want to catch me in the meantime, you will find me over on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday at 2pm GMT. So folks, until next time, over and out. See you later.